You might be saying, well, where's all the math in this chapter? And I say, it's in this section. So, Merry Christmas. First of all, an application, the greenhouse effect. And some of you have heard about it. The, the sun, of, cor of course you've heard about the greenhouse effect. It's uh, with all the talk about global warming. You should understand the, the basic science behind it. The sun produces uh, radiation in visible infrared and ultraviolet wavelengths primarily. That um, some of that radiation is reflected off the clouds. But the part that we're interested in thinking about the greenhouse effect is the part that actually makes it to the surface. The visible light that makes it to the surface heats the surface and then that surface, the Earth's surface, the objects on the Earth, then radiate electromagnetic radiation both in the visible and in the infrared. They radiate it, they radiate it back as both visible and uh, infrared radiation. The infrared radiation, nor, most of the infrared radiation coming from the sun is reflected off of the clouds and doesn't make it to the earth. But this inter infrared radiation that is generated at the surface of the earth, because the visible radiation made it through the atmosphere, it's also reflected from the atmosphere, reflected back down to the earth. So this infrared radiation, while the visible radiation is able to come in and heat the Earth's surface, the infrared radiation, a large portion of it, cannot get out. And some of it gets out, but, but a lot of it stays. That's the greenhouse effect. The, and it's the greenhouse gases, carbon, va I'm sorry, not water vapor, as well as carbon dioxide are two examples of greenhouse gases that um, that, that cause this reflection back to the surface of the Earth. And uh, that's the greenhouse effect. The more carbon dioxide and water vapor there is in our atmosphere, the greater the greenhouse effect. Venus has a runaway greenhouse effect and is in fact, even though it's farther from the Earth, it's hotter than Mercury is. And the reason is, is a runaway greenhouse effect. The, um, Energy density, energy per unit volume of plane electromagnetic waves propagating through vacuum. And one more thing about this, um, I've read the study, international studies of uh, studies of, of global warming. It is a fact that the Earth is getting warmer. That's irrefutable. Uh, we've seen it go up um, year after year after year. On average, it's, uh, the, the radiation is increasing, but, or the, um, the temperature is increasing. But the, the why is a matter of great political debate. Um, my conclusion is that the, the most careful and unbiased scientists that have studied this, that the vast majority of them, and I'm not an expert in the field, but the vast majority of them believe that the emission of carbon dioxide gases into the atmosphere by human activity are playing a role, a significant role, in the global warming. So I encourage you strongly, <laughs> as your f wonderful, uh, friendly physics teacher, to base your policy decisions and your um, understanding of reality to not use alternative facts. You're going to use real facts in, in drawing your conclusions. I encourage you all to do that. Be informed citizens and don't just try and confirm what you believe. Um, but instead study the issues and, and look at reputable sources. All right, so I promised you equations and I'm making good on that promise. State the energy density, energy per unit volume of a plane electromagnetic waves propagating through vacuum. This is it. This is an energy, we use a lowercase u to denote the energy per unit volume. It's called energy density. It's measured in joules, which is an energy, uh, per cubic meter. and um, that has two components, an electric component and a magnetic component. We have actually talked about these before. 
We talked about the electric component when we talked about capacitors. We talked about you can either think of the energy of a capacitor being stored in the charge on the plates, or you can be, think of it as being stored in the electric field between the plates. We're thinking about it in that latter way now. Energy is stored in these electric fields. With the magnetic field, we saw that when we talked about the energy in an inductor. And that can be thought of as two ways. The energy in the currents through the inductor, or the energy of the magnetic field that penetrates through the inductor. And we're thinking about this one in the latter way as well. So the, energy, the, the total energy density, energy per unit volume, is, has an electric and a magnetic component. Both of them involve uh, the squares of a field, E squared versus B squared. Both of them involve a two in the denominator. The electric field involves epsilon naught. That's the electric permittivity of free space that we talked about when we talked about C is one over the square root of mu naught times epsilon naught. That's that same quantity, one over four pi k. And then mu naught is the magnetic permeability of free space, the 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. That gives the um, energy density. And you know that electromagnetic waves have energy because they use them to heat up your bran muffin. So this is how it's found. State the uh, relationship between the electric and magnetic field magnitudes for plain electromagnetic waves propagating through vacuum. Um, E equals CB. This is a relationship that Maxwell found when he did that long calculation involving the four Maxwell equations. He found that the electric field magnitude, so this electric field here, its magnitude is related to the magnetic field magnitude by a coefficient of proportionality that is equal to c, the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8. Is c a big number or a small number, 3 times 10 to the 8? You say, well, it's a big number. It's a fast speed. So we're taking a big number here and multiplying that big number by b. So what's e going to be? e is going to be a big number. Um, But now we're going to show that the electric and magnetic fields make equal contributions to the energy density. And this um, is just a beautiful little piece of algebra that I think you ought to know how to do. So if you get stranded on a desert island, you know how to do this. We're going to look at the energy density. We are going to take advantage of what we know about E and B. We're eventually going to want to express this energy density, this is energy density, right, in terms of the electric field only. So we're going to take advantage of our knowledge that E equals C times B. But I want to get rid of B and express everything in terms of E. So let me solve this for B. It's E over C. But we also know what C is. C is 1 over the square root. It's an earlier concept that we just did. Mu naught times epsilon naught. Well, E over 1 over this square root is just E, if you invert and multiply, you get that. So that's B. And we're going to substitute that B into here and see what we get. Epsilon naught E squared. This is a great, great way to uh, understand the concepts is to be able to use them in a derivation like this. All right. B squared. I want to put this B in here, but I want to square it. So I'm going to square the E, and I'm going to square this mu naught epsilon naught. 
And then I have two, apps, two mu naught, that mu is m u mu, um, in the denominator that comes along for the ride. All right, do we get some cancellations? Well, we sure do. We get an amazing cancellation right here. The mu naughts in the numerator and denominator cancel each other. All right, have we shown that electric and magnetic fields make equal contributions to the energy density? Here's the contribution of electric fields. We already knew that. We talked about it before. Here's the contribution of magnetic fields. All we've done is to rewrite it using uh, C is 1 over mu naught epsilon square root of mu naught epsilon naught and E equals CB. Those contributions are equal to each other. So we've proved that. Uh, we're also asked to express the energy density in terms of the electric field only. Well, I've got 1 half epsilon naught e squared plus 1 half epsilon naught e squared, and that gives us epsilon naught e squared. So can you all do that? You sure can. That is not a difficult derivation and an amazing thing. Even though the electric fields are so, much, are so big, you have to multiply the magnetic field by C to get the electric field, yet the way that these mu naughts and epsilon naughts come together, the two contributions to the total energy is the same. Half the energy that hits you and gets absorbed by your body when you're uh, trying to get a suntan, um, which is a bad idea in my opinion anyway, but when you're out in the sun and that sun is uh, shining on you, half of the energy that you're getting absorbed into your body or into your skin is electrical and the other half is magnetic. All right, uh, state the relationship between the intensity and energy density of electromagnetic waves. So uh, the intensity, we, back when we talked about sound, we talked about intensity. We defined it as a power per unit area. So it's measured in, a power is measured in watts, area is measured in meters squared, and that's intensity. In, for electromagnetic waves, for historical reasons, we use S to describe the intensity. And so S is the intensity. It's measured in the same units as sound is. <coughs> sound intensity is measured watts per square meter. Well, the intensity is a power per unit area. If we look at this diagram and we ask about how much power passes through this area A in a time t, I just covered up the t, there's a t here, the distance traveled by the wave in a time t is c times t, so distance is the speed times the time, so that's this distance here. That's the distance traveled and we're interested in knowing how much energy is, is in this in this slab. That's a total energy divided by uh, a power is an energy divided by a time. So this over that gives the power. Area is just coming along for the ride. It's right here. And then the total energy included in this slab is the energy density, that's energy per unit volume times the volume. And I claim that this is the volume of that slab. Cross-sectional area A times the depth, but the depth is CT, so it's A times C times T. That's length times width times height will give the volume of this box shape. So that's the volume. Energy, U is energy per unit volume, times the volume will give you this total energy, and then T comes along for the ride. The T's cancel, and we get, uh, the A's cancel, and we get just C times U. So I'm not expecting you to know this derivation, but I wanted to do it quickly. It only took us a couple of minutes to see where it all comes from. And we've just shown that the energy, 
uh, intense, the intensity of this um, electromagnetic radiation, radiation, S, is the speed of light times the energy density. So that's pretty cool that you can relate the energy density U to the intensity of the electromagnetic radiation.